welcome statistics the row below shows the ages in years of 60 candidates who vied on a political party for parliamentary elections in a certain country as recorded in a computer program so the table is there a using 44.5 as the working mean calculate one the mean this is the actual mean so how do you get the actual mean given the working mean also referred to as the assumed mean we need to start from there and there is a formula for that so actual mean which is denoted by x bar is given by given the working mean of the assumed mean we take the working mean of the assumed mean so a means the assumed mean of the working mean plus the summation of fd divided by the summation of f summation of f is the total frequency you add all the frequency get the sum summation of fd you take frequency column you multiply by the deviation column so how do you get deviation we get deviation by taking x minus the assumed mean or the working mean so a refers to the working mean or the assumed mean so this is how we get the deviation and x is the midpoint of these classes so i have a prepared table here which I'm going to use. So these will be the classes. Those are the classes. Then you have the frequency. Then we shall have the midpoint, which is X. That is the X midpoint of these classes. Then I will also need to have the deviation, that is D, which you're going to obtain by taking X minus the working mean. The working mean, let me just uh, use uh, A as the working mean. A is also the assumed mean or the working mean. I think I should write it here. So assumed mean is also referred to as the working mean. Then from there, I will also need uh, this column for frequency multiplied by the D, and the deviation. So the classes very fast. So let me write the classes beginning from 20 to 29, then 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, then 60 to 69. The frequency 8, 13, 19, 17, and 3. So let's get X. X is the midpoint of these classes. We'll explain using the first one. The first class is 20, 29. To get the midpoint, you just take 29 plus 20, or rather, you may say 20 plus 29, then you divide by 2. That is how you get the midpoint. So 20 plus 29 divided by 2, you get 24.5. You do the same for the other plus 30 plus 39 divided by 2 you get 34.5 40 plus 49 divided by 2 you get 44.5 50 plus 59 divided by 2 you get 54.5 60 plus 69 divided by 2 you get 64.5 now we get d and how do you get d we take x subtract the working mean or the assumed mean so like the first one x is 24.5 subtract the working mean which is 44.5 you get negative 20 the second one, 34.5 minus 44.5, negative 10. The other one is um, 44.5 minus 44.5, you get 0. 54.5, subtract 44.5, you get 10. The next one is 64.5, subtract 12.5, you get 20. Then after doing that, get FD. Take frequency, multiply by deviation. Like the first class, F is 8, D is negative 20. So multiply 8 times negative 20, you get negative 160. 13 times negative 10, negative 130. 19 times 0, you get 0. 17 times 10, you get 170. Then 3 times 20, you get 60. So from this uh, formula here, we need to get the summation of FD. Summation of FD means this column, FD, we add everything. Negative 160 plus negative 130 plus 0 plus 170 plus 60. That will give uh, the summation, the summation of FD. And when you add everything there, uh, you will get negative um, 60 when you add everything in that column. Then summation of F is the total frequency. Total frequency is there. Add 8 plus 13 plus 19 plus 17 plus 3. That will give uh, 60. Now we have everything that we need now uh, from the formula. Therefore, the actual mean, uh, the actual mean will be given by the assumed mean. Assumed mean or the working mean, which is 44.5. 44.5 plus the summation of fd which is a negative 60 divided by the summation of f which is 60 so this will give 44.5 uh, plus and this one because you can see it will be negative 
uh, negative plus times negative will give negative 60 divided by 60 is 1 so this one will give 43.43.5 .43 that is how you work out the first one so part two the question the standard deviation of the distribution so the first thing is to know how do you get the standard deviation of this type of uh, data that you have here and this is how we get it so standard deviation is obtained by getting the square root of the variance so how do we get the variance? This is how we get the variance. This type of data, we'll need to have um, the summation of FD squared divided by the summation of frequency. Subtract the summation of FD divided by the summation of F. Then you square this. So this is very important. So this is how we get the variance. Once we get the square root of the variance, we get standard deviation. So from this, you'll know the columns that you need. For example, I will need... Uh, fd squared i'll need uh, this column fd squared fd squared i will that is the only i think that is the only column that i need to add from this because uh, summation of fd is there summation of frequency is there so let us prepare this column yeah the summation of fd squared so we will need to square d uh, we can square d first let me uh, first square d to make it easier so we square d so get d squared first uh, d is negative 20 the first one so we square that you get 400 the other one is negative 10 square that you get 100 the other one is 0 10 squared is 100 20 squared is 400 then from there we will now prepare this column f d squared we take this column f we multiply by d squared so 8 times 400 you get that 200 then 13 times 100, you get 1300. Then the other one will be 0, of course, because d squared is 0 here. Then the other one is 17 times 100, you get 1700. Then 3 times 400, you get 1200. Then after doing that, we now get the summation. The summation of fd squared. We add everything. That's 200 plus 1300 plus 0 plus 1700 plus uh, 1200. Now when you add everything there, you get 7400 7400 now having that now we can put everything in this formula you have here so standard deviation will be given by uh, we get the summation of fd squared which is 7400 divided by summation of f which is uh, 60 then subtract summation of fd we already done that which is um, negative 60 we have done this negative 60 divided by 60 then you square that we had already got uh, the summation it is here the summation of fd which is negative 60 divided by summation of f so you got that so working everything here uh, we shall begin by working you just use a calculator 7400 divided by 60 subtract negative 60 squared negative 60 divided by 60 squared now uh, this will give um 122.122.33 then you're now getting the standard deviation by getting the square root of that this is variance 122.33 is a variance so standard deviation is the square root of that and this will give um 11.06 so that is the standard deviation part b the quartile deviation of the data the quartile deviation of the data so the first question is, how do you get quartile deviation of this kind of data, group data? This is how we get it. Um, quartile deviation, I'll note this one by QD, is given by Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. Quartile deviation is also referred to as semi-interquartile range. So this is how we get it. We need to know what is Q1. Q1 is the lower quartile and Q3 is the upper quartile. So how do we get Q1? Q1 is the lower quartile, so we take 1 over 4, that is a quarter, multiply by, to get the position of Q1, multiply by total frequency, which is 60, and this will give us a 25th. This will be the 25th, no, it will be 25th. So 1 over 4 times a 60, we'll get this one on which position. This will be 15th, 15th position. And then we have uh, Q3. Q3 is the upper quartile. Upper quartile is the quarter of the set of data. And this will give us um, 45th position. So how do we identify now the class where we have Q1? 15, we'll get this one from the cumulative frequency. So we'll need to have another column here known as the cumulative frequency. 
CF. So cumulative frequency is how we get it. The first frequency is 8. So we go adding. That is how we get cumulative frequency. 8 plus. The next one is 13. You get 8 plus 13. You get 21. 21 plus 19. You get uh, 40. 40 plus um, 17. This will give 57. And 57 plus 3. You get 60. So that is how we add to get cumulative frequency. Now Q1, if you want to get the the class where we have the lower quartile, we found that one will be the 15th position. So where do we have 15 in this cumulative frequency? Where is it located? 15 is in this class. This is where 15 lies. It is not in 8. The first is here. 15 is actually in the second class. That is 30 to 39. So 30 to 39. 30 to 39. Then 45, that is the upper quartile. Per quartile is 45th. 45th um, is in this class. 50 to 59. 50 to 59. Like that. 50 to 59. After getting that, uh, there is a formula that you're going to use to get now the Q1. So Q1. This is how we get Q1. This is how we get Q1. We're going to use this formula. Um, L plus N. This is a Q1. N divided by 4 minus CF divided by f everything multiplied by i this is the same formula that you're going to modify it is the formula we use for the median that we modify to calculate q1 so what is l l refers to the lower class limit of this class that you found here in q1 the lower class limit you just subtract uh, 0 0.5 and that is subtract 0 0.5 so we subtract um 0 0.5 from 30 so 30 minus 0 0.5 you get 29.5 then plus n divided by 4 is the total frequency that is 60 divided by 4 which you got as 15 then minus cf cf is the cumulative frequency above that class cumulative frequency above that class is um see the class is here that is that nine so the cumulative frequency above it is eight it is eight so subtract eight then divided by f f is the frequency of that class frequency of that class which is uh, 13, which is 13, like that. Then multiply by I. I'm using this formula. Very important to note that. I is the class size. How do you get the class size? Uh, we just take the upper class limit, 39.5 minus 29.5, and this will give 10. So that is how we will end up getting Q1. And you just use a calculator there, and you work it out. So 20.5 plus 15 minus 8, this will give, uh, divided by 13, this one will give um, 34 point, this will give 34.885, 34.885. Then for Q3, do the same. Uh, L, L is the lower class limit of this class, which is a 50. So 50 subtract 0 0.5, you get uh, 49.5 plus then now this one will not be n divided by 4 because it is the upper quartile it is three quarters three quarters multiply by n n is the total frequency so this will be 45 3 over 4 times 60 will be 45 then minus cf cumulative frequency above that class uh, the class is 50 to 59 cumulative frequency above it is 40 as you can see it is 40 then divided by the frequency of that class frequency of that class is um 17 17 then multiply by the class size that is i class size is a 59.5 the upper class limit subtract 49.5 you still give 10 so again use a calculator to do that 10.5 plus 45 minus 40 divided by 17 and this will give um 8 point this will give 8 point is it in 8 no, not give it so this will give 52 you give 52.441 52.441 so now we have um, q1 and q3 so quartile deviation is therefore given by of the semi interquartile range that is the other name i'll write it here also referred to as semi interquartile range the other name for quartile deviation will be given by q3 q3 which is uh 52 52.441 subtract um, subtract q1 which is 34.885 then you divide that out by 2 and this will give um, 8.7 8.778 and that is how you're supposed to solve that question thank you